set up for the electrolysis rust removal, kind of showed how effective it is at getting the rust off of an item. Um, I've got this big heavy cast iron intake over here that I've been working on and I'm really impressed at how much rust it's removed from it. Um, it had it down inside the passages and the runners and I wanted to get all that out before you know I eventually put it on the car. But you know it also looks like it's got a bunch of rust under the paint and it's been working on getting that off so somebody probably just spray painted it to make it look nice. So we'll work on getting all that off. I probably still will end up sandblasting it. It's really pretty environmentally safe. It's water, some soda suds, and electricity. Rebars that I mount down here in the corners uh, for sacrificial metal, along with some scrap steel that I had that I was playing with the plasma cutter on. I think this worked really well because it had a lot of surface area. It'll pull full 10 amps off the power supply, which I'll get that hooked up, but I'm gonna try and keep that inside the garage you know, in case it rains, because we've been getting a lot of thunderstorms here lately. But I wanted to bring this outside because we're doing some work inside. Get this together and I'll show you what it involves. So I'm gonna clean these up because they've got some rust on them. I could go and buy new ones, but there's still plenty of metal on here. It just clogs up pretty quick. So I'll do that for all four of them, get them cleaned up, get some bright metal on there, and we'll be able to uh, keep using those. Let me clean up the rest of them, I'll get them situated, and we'll get in here for the actual setup. All of them cleaned, clamping them in, like so. Just to get a little bit of contact there. That'll be the one that I hook to. Same. Now I've been doing this with water in it, but it'll be much easier to get this big ass intake in here without the uh, without the water in here because I have to use some boards to kind of hold it in place. This thing is very very heavy. Oh. We're going to put this one to the intake itself. So that one will go over here through the copper wire because we don't really want to put the alligator clip down in the water. And the positive wire will go right here. And you just kind of want to remember it like you want it to go from there. So it's negative, take it away, add it to here, positive. And that's all there is to it. Sprinkle in some of this laundry booster to act as an electrolyte. I have no idea what the ratio is. I just pour some in. I don't know, quarter cup, half cup. It'll mix up in there. Let me go ahead and get the copper lead hooked up. And this works out because the positive is all out here and the negative will be isolated in here. And we'll come over here with this. Hook up to there like that. And that's pretty much all there is to it. All right, it doesn't need to be super full. It's just a little bit just a little bit over the top. I'll go over the settings. I probably need some more soda suds because we're only pulling about seven amps right now. Let me go down here and show you. So you see there we're pulling about seven amps. Over the weekend when I was doing this initially, I was reusing the water several times and I just kept adding some of the laundry suds to it and I would immediately get a lot of fizzing and foaming out of the water. So let's add some more suds to it. If we look carefully, we can see it fizzing, fizzing, yep. So we'll check in with this later, but also we're pulling almost 10 amps, which is about where we should be. So I've been running it between 12 and 14 volts. 
uh, to try to keep the amperage up. This is a 10 amp power supply, so it won't do any more than 10, but I don't see any pr problem with running it right there at the top. It's about noon the next day. Amperage draws about half of what it was. We were running about 10 amps before. Uh, this is down to about five amps, so we would expect that the anodes uh, are gonna be quite covered in rust. Kind of restricts the, the ability for the current to flow through the electrolyte, which is the water with the suds in it. Let's see what it looks like. So we see there's quite a bit of rust buildup in the water where the two panels were. A little bit less so where our rebar is. Last night the water was uh, pretty rusty on top so a lot of it probably settled out but you can see here it's still fizzing away. I decided against pulling the manifold out right now. It's uh, really heavy and I just went ahead and cleaned up uh, the plates and started it up again. Uh, I'm going to let it sit for a while because I know there's a lot of rust under that paint and it's going to take a while for it to work it all off. I can see some of it on the plates. There's like a blue-green substance uh, which normally wouldn't collect there but I think the rust that's under the paint is transporting the uh, flakes of paint off and getting stuck to the sacrificial metal. Uh, so I'm going to give it a while longer because I think it's going to take some more time. Alright, so I'm done with the electrolysis portion of this. Uh, Pretty much went as far as I could. Uh, I was starting to run into issues where I had to change the water a lot and clean the, the rebar off a lot. The initial part that I showed, took a break from that, probably spent another week uh, changing the water, cleaning the anodes, and I had some pieces of sheet metal in there. Those were really good for surface area to pull that rust off. They always had a lot of stuff really stuck to them. Uh, throughout the process and those just got destroyed like there's really nothing left of those and It's gotten as much as I think it can. There's a lot of big deep crevices here on the bottom side of it There's pockets that form when it's generating the hydrogen that just fills up with hydrogen basically and uh, Doesn't allow any reaction the bottom side is really clean at this point I think down inside here is as clean as it's going to get there's nothing loose and it's going to take some, uh, you know, wire brush down in here to try and clean up the rest of it. And then I'm going to have to go through and figure out how to get this thing degreased without it flash rusting. That always seems to be uh, the uh, big catch here when painting something because it's got to be free of grease. And if it was a panel, you could wipe it down with like some grease remover. But how do you do this? You know, you can't, you can't really clean it. So I've heard use alcohol. If somebody's got some ideas, I'd be really happy to hear about how the best way to degrease this without it flash rusting. Like if I take soap and water to this and it dries, it'll flash over. So I've got it coated with WD-40 right now to keep that from happening. Uh, that'll be the next steps. Uh, I'll probably have an update on that as well as I get it cleaned up and prepped for paint. And then eventually we'll get it on the car with the new uh, four barrel. But just wanted to share the electrolysis portion, what our result is, where we are right now, and what the next steps are. Really appreciate uh, checking in, watching, giving me a little bit of your time. Hopefully this was helpful. I'm just sharing what you know I'm working on. I'm not really here to be like a how-to. If you've got something you disagree with, that's fine. You know, let me know in the comments. I'm just going off of what I'm finding, trying new things and trying different ways of doing stuff because that's how we got to do it, right? Just get out there and try something. Even if it's wrong, you tried, you learn from it, and you find a better way. Talk to you next time.